Welcome to Beyond the Bio with me, Sophie Milliken. In this podcast series, we are going to be delving into all of the different ways that you can raise your professional profile. I am joined today by Emma Fielding. Emma left the corporate world where she was training to be an accountant and started renovating her own properties aged 25. She took the plunge into flipping houses two years ago. Within those two years, Emma has raised over £1.3 million in angel finance. And by the end of this year, we'll have sold over £2.5 million of properties, which includes 10 flip projects in South and West Yorkshire. Emma has also appeared on the Sky TV show, The Property Graduate, where she made it to the final three. And that is what I'm going to be chatting to Emma about today, about the experience of being on TV and the profile raising opportunities that has since created. Let's get stuck in. So welcome, Emma. Thank you. Today, we are going to be talking all about your experience of being on TV the telly. (laughs) So can you tell us about the context to you being on TV? Okay, so The Property Graduate is actually a little bit like The Apprentice. So it's kind of three rounds and each round, each contestant gets knocked out. Within each round, you have a task or a challenge. And the end kind of task is basically you present a deal to the judges. And the winning prize is actually you win a million pound of investor finance for your project. That sounds very cool. And how did that come about? Did you apply? So actually, I saw the show, um, the first series actually on social media. And I knew a couple of people that had been in the show and I watched it religiously. And I thought, actually, this is a great show for, just for property and just a raising your, your profile as well. So actually, it was in the second series where they were wanting, obviously, contestants. And I thought, actually, I'm going to go for this. It, things like this actually really strike me because I love to live out my comfort zone. And this is one. being on TV is out of my comfort zone. So I like to push myself. So I thought, why not? Um, I had a couple of glasses of gin to do... do, (laughs) Pink gin gin to do the actual um, application. And before you know it, I was travelling down to London to actually film the TV show which was incredible. So it was literally application form to being on it. Yes, pretty much, pretty much. So there was quite a few hundred people that applied and only 20 was invited to the first kind of day, which is the first task. And then contestants get knocked out through there. Wow. So how far did you get? I got to the final three. Um, I was the only girl, so I was very happy that I was the only female because I felt that I was doing it for all the females that are in property. How would you say the experience of being on TV has impacted your profile? Uh, Do you know what? It's really actually increased every sort of platform that I'm on in terms of following, in terms of interaction with followers. I get a lot of messages now of people saying, how do I get started in property or general advice? Or actually, you know, they're coming to me in terms of investment as well, which has really, really helped actually just A, growing my business and actually what I'm about in terms of flipping houses, but actually in terms of just getting yourself out there. Which, again, being on TV, being on Sky, you know, quite a few times in the month can definitely help just get your name out there. I bet. I bet. So are you still getting messages now, even though it was, yes. what, last year? Yeah, yeah. So actually, they've just filmed season three. And again, a lot of the the people that was looked at the show last year have now messaged me or the message other people as well and saying, oh, what's it like to be on the show? So I've given my advice and my top tips um, for the next people that are going to be on the show. And what top tips did you give them? I said, be very calm, be cool, calm and collected. I said, do your research, every little bit of research that you think you know, the little bits of knowledge, research that again. 100% be your fingers on the pulse with the numbers as well, with the financial side of things, because the judges will pick up on that for sure. So what kind of preparation did you undertake? Do you know what? It was one of those things that I thought, actually, I'm going to wing this a little bit. And I always think sometimes that can be the best approach but actually it probably wasn't the best approach if I'm being honest I definitely think I needed to work on my speech a little bit and just actually cover every question that they could potentially ask me so I felt like I was probably a little bit lacking on the question side of things but actually when I look back at it now it actually isn't too bad but I think I'm just super critical on myself which most most people are I guess did they give you you know some did they prepare you well did they 
Do you know what? Coach Sophie, you in any way. they gave us zero prep. And again, they put us a little bit in the dark, but I think that's pretty standard with, with TV anyway, because you are just literally out of your comfort zone. So they don't give you any any prep at all, but they just say research all areas. And especially as the rounds um, you know, happened, you tend to do far more research than the first round compared to the third round. Um, so yeah, the key was just research really. Did they give you advice around things like what to wear and you know how to groom yourself? To <laughs> they look actually, great on TV? Probably that was the most part where they gave us advice or guidance. Not let's to say. wear green, I bet. Not to wear green and not to be too standout-ish. But saying that, so there was actually one guy that was actually the winner, and he wore a, a zebra print T-shirt oh, wow. because his um, company was called Zebra, like Zebra Property Investing or something, and um, and he really stood out. And at the time, the judges were like. Oh, you can't wear that you can't wear that for the final but actually I think he did in the end and again confidence people would recognise him being on TV and you would actually see his van outside and again it was all covered in zebra print so it all mingled in quite well I like that, that, is, that is <laughs> very cool. bold yeah and what happened when you were actually doing the filming? Like, were there any bits where you fluffed it and could you re-record it and things like that? Do you know what? There was no opportunity of re-recording. So it wasn't you're... live, was it? So no, it sure wasn't they... live. Or maybe you were just so great that they didn't need to re-record <laughs> it, right? Um, I don't think so. But yeah, there was no element of re-recording. When you went in that room, you know, to present your deal or to present the task itself, you were literally in that room and you were recording. So you had to be on the ball, which I guess can be quite nerve-wracking. And it is, but I always think the first 30 seconds are the most nerve wracking. But as soon as you settle in, you kind of calm down and you relax a lot more. So yeah, that's definitely what happened with me. So when the series came out and it was live and, and people could watch you on the show, what sorts of things did you do to promote it? So I've got quite a, a probably steady following on Instagram. So yeah, I really just hammered it on social media, basically across Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the usual platforms. And you could see actually the more time times I was posting about being on the show and especially throughout the competition more people would message me or they would interact in the post in general so you know my engagement levels went through the roof in that month period when the show was actually live on on Sky so from that aspect is absolutely fantastic so what were you sharing like snippets from the show yeah snippets from the show little clips as well because obviously the show is actually on YouTube so you could get the clips from there obviously a lot of people were interested oh you know what's Emma in in now type of thing but yeah little snippets little clips which which worked really well obviously being on TV is getting people watching you and seeing what you're up to how would you say it helped you to reach a broader audience like did you notice a boost in your social media immediately how long did that take you know what Sophie it probably took within 24 hours Oh, actually, really? Yeah. And I remember actually watching the first episode with my parents and thinking, wow, like this is actually on Sky. This is quite a big deal. Again, I was posting about it at the time. It was actually live on Sky. My following just went absolutely through the roof to the point where it got a little bit much where I had to actually turn my phone off. Was it was it on like weekly or? Did yeah, it, like... yeah. So they did it weekly um, and it was on a Thursday every week, the next four weeks, basically. Again, it was quite easy to direct people in actually watching the show because it was the consistency of the next four weeks. So did you know the winner? Already? Yeah, so I did know the winner and I'm, I'm really 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 grateful actually that, that he won because he's, he's a fantastic guy and he's you doing some in great touch. stuff we have I actually saw them a couple of months ago down in London and we've got a WhatsApp group so in terms of a community actually as well that what it brings extra benefit it brings mm. that because you know we constantly bounce off ideas with each other or challenges or you know does somebody know this has somebody heard of that and and that's really helped for sure so you said that you got quite a bit of interaction on social media and you were getting messages and things. Did you get any mean messages? I don't think I did, which I think is quite rare when you go on, you know, TV, let's say. I think there can always be that element of kind of mean, nasty, hurtful messages that come your way. But I didn't get any, actually, which surprised me because I was building up for comments of that nature. But the the vast majority, I would say, 99% were so, you know, welcoming and supportive and just saying good on you. People that I speak to often speak about, you know, don't want to get the trolls or the haters or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But the reality is 
that that's always going to be a minority. And in your case, you're proving that you, you haven't even seen that at all. So, yeah. you know, the benefits that people are going to get from putting themselves out there are always going to far outweigh any possible negative. And it, t- it must take quite a lot for some mean keyboard warrior to send. I think so. Yeah, yeah I think so. I think, you know, the occasional odd message I might get every now and again, and it might not be anything, you know, kind of related to the TV show, just in general on Instagram, which, you know what, doesn't faze me because I think it's part and parcel of actually being on social media to some extent yeah yeah and hopefully it stays a minority exactly. rather than, than um, anything else so you mentioned there that being on tv helped you with that peer group and you've stayed in touch etc did being on tv open any other doors to new connections or collaborations within your industry yeah so actually the one of the investors that i'm working with now he actually heard of the tv show and it's funny, actually, how he, he heard about it. It was through a connection of, of his. He heard about it. And then when I had a call with him, obviously, I mentioned it. And I think, again, it adds a lot of credibility to actually, you know, if you are raising finance or if you're going for that next business deal, you know, it can add a heck of amount of credibility to actually what you're putting out there or what you're presenting to somebody. And I think they can buy into whatever that element is very, very quickly because you have got that credibility. You have pushed yourself out there. You have gone out of your comfort zone. Zone. So for me, it's definitely enabled me to be in contact with more investors and actually they know me, you know, very quickly now than what they wouldn't have done if I wasn't on the TV show. That's great. That's really good. And hopefully that'll have, you know, a reasonable shelf life as, as well, <laughs> uh, particularly if it's on YouTube as well, which, yes. is, which is pretty cool. Do you still promote the clips and things? Do you, or have you kind of... Sometimes I do because, you know, it comes up on like, obviously my my, my archive on Instagram and stuff. And I was saying, oh, like this was, you know, six months ago, or this was three months ago, or, you know, this time last year. So yeah, I, I definitely, you know, still promote it. And, you know, obviously the, the new season has just been filmed. So I was saying, obviously, good luck to, to the new contestants as well, that obviously messaged me about the show. So yeah, so I would definitely say I'm a massive advocate of the show because it can raise your profile in so many ways. Plus, you can get a great prize if you win as well. That's a really good way of kind of reusing, recycling that content when the yes. next show's yeah. coming out. I would always that. say, you know, if you've been on a show, don't be scared to recycle that content, you know, every now and again, because, you know, people will remember, like, remember actually, oh, I saw her on that show. This is why I like her type of thing. So good shout. Good chat. So what advice would you give to individuals who aspire to get on TV to raise their profiles? I think the the most important advice that I can give is, you know, don't be scared to step out of your comfort comfort zone. Everybody has that comfort zone. Now it's how far you want to push it. Now TV, like you say, Sophie, is the ultimate. Don't be afraid to do, you know, other things prior to going on TV to, you know, help yourself, help your confidence and your, and your esteem from that. But actually go out and do it. You know, you only get one chance, really, I think, at TV. Go out do it and be the best you possibly can. And I think that's the only thing anybody can can ask for you. So what's next for you then? You know, is is that it, do you think, TV-wise? Or have you got your sights on anything else? Do you know what? The, there's always a lot of people that actually say to me, oh, one day I'll see you on Homes un- Under the Hammer and things like that, which probably at some point, if I do buy an auction, they might see me there. But in terms of TV, I'm always open to new opportunities. And actually, again, being on TV, it opens those doors. So, you know, it's enabled me to do a lot of new fun stuff that I wouldn't necessarily be doing in my day-to-day role. Yeah fun stuff's always cool isn't it and it's then that snowball effect of it what, what it then leads to and those conversations so is there like an ultimate show that you would want to be on ultimate show I did think about The Apprentice actually obviously just because I'm a massive advocate of Karen Brady and Linda Plant as well one of our and clients Linda. yes yes <laughs> and also Dragon's Den as well you know I love Sarah um, and Deborah you know I'm a massive advocate of what they're doing um, yeah I'm just in awe of them you know I know people that have been on both The Apprentice and, and Dragon's Den and I think the profile raising opportunities that those shows have, have given to the people that have been on them are not to be underestimated for yeah. sure yeah so so, um, yeah, although I guess the, the thing with the BBC is they can edit it however <laughs> however they want. But They're a little bit more in control at that point, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, but I think, you know, the people I know who have been on those shows have had positive experiences. Yeah. So, 
worth worth considering. Awesome. Okay, well, thanks so much for coming on the show today, Emma. It's been great to hear about your very positive experience of being on TV. And hopefully that will inspire anyone that is thinking about applying for a show or looking at various TV opportunities to just go for it. Thank you for listening. If you're serious about growing your profile, take our free profile assessment quiz to see where you're at right now and get hints and tips on how to improve your score. You'll find the link to the quiz in the show notes. If you've enjoyed the episode, it would be mint if you'd subscribe, like and leave a review. See you next Monday.